Have you ever wondered what would happen if you got an old setup from 20 years ago, plopped it in the present, and see how it performed? I have, so I decided to get an ancient office computer, pair it with some equally dated peripherals, and expose it to the modern web and programs. Then we will upgrade this setup to try and squeeze the maximum of performance out of it. Will this go horribly, or be a success? We shall see. So, the computer of my choice was this Dell Dimension 5150, which back when it released in 2005 was regarded as a mid-range family computer. Even at the time, it was somewhat dimly reviewed, especially when it came to graphical performance, and so gaming on it 20 years later should be a real treat. In terms of raw specs, it has a Pentium 4 630, running at 3 GHz that has a measly one core, but two threads. It has 1 GB of DDR2 memory, and an 80 GB hard disk drive that I will be replacing with a 250 GB one for this video, since the original died long ago, since this computer came out of an abandoned warehouse. The graphics card everyone seems to be so hateful about is an ATI Radeon X300, which comes with 32 MB of DDR VRAM. I'm also pairing this computer with a 2-3 megabit per second internet connection. Historically, this would correspond to cable, as dial-up would not be usable anymore in the modern era. The screen resolution will be 1024 by 768 Since browsing on the XP that this computer shipped with wouldn't be a very bright idea, I had a few choices of modern-day operating systems to put this on. Doing a bit of investigation, I would only be able to install Windows 10 32-bit due to the age of the CPU, so I decided to go for Linux so I could both optimize the operating system as well as gain 64-bit functionality which is becoming more essential as programs drop 32-bit support. While there are many distributions of Linux, I opted for Arch Linux because of how lightweight it is, which would give this computer every fighting chance it could at being usable. Installing Arch was painful, but without major issue, and soon I had the computer in a bootable state running Arch. By then, I was tasked with yet another crucial decision, which desktop environment to use. For those not familiar with that term, it's basically the graphical interface that you can use to launch programs and interact with your operating system. I could go without one, but then I would have to run everything from the shell which doesn't sound very fun. I opted for KDE Plasma, but I later switched to XFCE4 as Plasma was not playing very nice with the graphics card. Now that everything is installed, let's start by using this computer for what it was originally intended for simple tasks like web browsing. The slow internet connection combined with lack of memory made for a very poor browsing experience, and pages generally struggled to load. Adding more than one tab would make the browser crawl, which would then ripple out to the rest of the system, making it very sluggish. Modern pages also aren't built for the small screen resolution, leading to a cluttered feeling when browsing. I moved on to YouTube, which worked decently at 480p, but going beyond that would cause massive stutters in the video. General usability of the system felt pretty poor as well, as the hard drive made launching anything take a while and the limited memory capacity hindered too many applications being open at once. The graphics card also did not enjoy plasma and there were constantly stutters and visual glitches when doing anything. By this point I was curious about gaming performance and I went ahead and installed Steam. This quickly turned into a nightmare though, as Steam proved to be too much for the system and would either crash or not be responsive. At this point, I knew the system would need a major upgrade if it had any hope of being usable beyond a single Firefox tab. I found some spare DDR2 memory and upgraded the total memory capacity to 3GB, and I found and installed a spare 120GB SSD. While this was a reduction in capacity, it should greatly improve the responsiveness of the system. I also removed the internet bandwidth cap, allowing the USB Wi-Fi connector I was using to reach maximum potential. With these changes and the system glowing in a new light, I was hopeful the system would be a bit more responsive. I then had to transfer Linux over to the SSD, which while seeming simple in Linux fashion ended up taking several hours instead. However, I added an 8GB swap file, so the system could offload some of the RAM onto the disk if the 3GB of memory filled up. I also took time to switch to XFCE, a lighter display environment, which I was hoping would cut down on the graphical glitches and improve the system speed even more. Immediately, I noticed a huge improvement in the boot time of the system, reducing it from a few minutes to under a minute. Here's an unedited video of it booting.
The system also felt way more responsive, with programs opening quickly. I also increased the display to 1080p to reduce some of the clutter and allow for more space to multitask. I once again tried some browsing, and the computer performed much better. I found it handled multiple tabs fine, and with more memory to spare for sites, they loaded much faster and ran smoother. It wasn't perfect, of course, and it was slower than a modern computer, but the delay was minimal and it was certainly usable. With more confidence in the system, I installed some word processing applications, and it handled them fine. Here's me writing the script for this video. I started multitasking on it very heavily, and even with multiple Chrome tabs, a word editor, Discord, and some other stuff open, it still ran very smooth. I checked the memory usage and it had cut into some of the swap, but since it was an SSD, it caused a minimal slowdown with the system. With it handling things so well now, I was curious to try some gaming on it, especially since its graphical performance was considered a weak on it even when it came out. The first game I started with was Penumbra, which released in around 2006 to 2007. This ran alright on low settings, though exiting would lock up the whole system requiring it to be restarted. I then moved on to Synodic, which crashed a billion times before I finally got it running at 640x480 lowest settings with all OpenGL 2.0 effects disabled. I got a somewhat playable 40fps but the game looked absolutely horrible. Enabling OpenGL 2.0 did make the game look better, but the fps was reduced to about 20. I then moved on to Steam games, with Steam working much much better with ample memory and graphical acceleration disabled. I tried to pick lightweight games, but most did not even launch due to the limited OpenGL capabilities of the Radeon. Games I tried without success were FNAF, Counter-Strike, The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, Pizza Tower, Outlast, and SCP Containment Breach. I did have some mixed success with a few games though. Terraria did open, though the FPS was very low until I reduced the desktop resolution for some reason. This may have freed up some of the 32 megabytes of VRAM for the game. After this and reducing all the game settings, I got a mediocre 20 frames per second. Another 2D game, Project Zomboid, launched, but soon after it would freeze, and I never was able to get much further than the title screen. Undertale as expected ran great, and I got a pretty much solid 30 frames per second. I also delved into the visual novel space with Doki Doki Literature Club, which ran the best out of all the games I tested, getting upwards of 70 frames per second while playing. After this, I tried a comparatively demanding title, Dust and Elysian Tale, which while launching was riddled with visual artifacts and was very, very broken. It seemed like 90% of the textures weren't loaded or in the right spot. This probably is related to the game requiring a higher graphical version than the card can provide. Despite this, I was still able to play, but I soon softlocked myself in the ceiling which ended my progression. I finalized my gaming with the world-renowned title, Ricochet, which ran pretty badly for being a 24-year-old game. I think many of the issues that came with running games were the Linux drivers, as this card had a lot better performance in Windows, but realistically you have to keep your expectations very limited with the graphics card as it's very low end even for 2005, and now it lacks most modern features even lightweight games require. And that summarizes my experiences with the Dell Dimension. Overall, I was pleased with how this computer performed. While it wasn't the fastest at every task, it still was plenty usable and provided you don't do gaming or HD video playback, it is an excellent system for basic web browsing and applications. I did most of the video preparation on this, writing the script, research, audio recording, and it worked perfectly when doing this. I wouldn't use it in the base configuration, which is 1GB of RAM plus the slow hard disk, as it was much too slow, but with some basic upgrades and a lightweight operating system it brought new life out of such an old system. It's impressive to see even a 20 year old computer hold up to modern standards and is a true testament to the power of the Pentium architecture. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, consider giving it a thumbs up or even subscribing. Have a nice day, and let this be an inspiration to resurrect and repurpose any old computers you have lying around the house.